What's going on guys? I am Guitar Again ZL1 and this is Dirty Max Jack and welcome back to Truck Central. We've got an awesome video for you today. Yeah, so what we have in store for you guys today is what you see here behind us. So you guys know that I have a 2015 2500 HD Duramax and Nick has a 2016 Silverado 1500 Z71. So what we decided to do was take a little bit of a switch. So I will be giving my candid feedback for you guys on Nick's truck and Nick. I'll be giving it on his truck. And I gotta say, Jack, if you just wanna like lounge around, you can just pop a squat around the wheel. Unfortunately, you can't do that on mine. Yes. Interesting differences between both trucks. And I think I'm gonna have a fun time driving this. Yeah, so just so you guys are aware, some of the modifications on my truck, I've got a set of 22 by 14 inch American Force wheels. These are 14 inch Ditto Trail Grapplers. The truck is lifted five inches right now. It has adjustability from four to six inches. It is fully deleted. It's got a big turbo under the hood, an S369, and a slew of other things. So this is going to be Nick's first time driving a diesel, uh, and, and let alone a diesel that has a whole bunch of things added to it. So you're really going from kind of the baseline to the best, if you will, right. for your first experience. Right. Let's list the big, the mod list on this truck. The long laundry the very, list of mods. The long laundry list, yes. <laughs> We got a nice leveling kit by Supreme Suspension. Nice. And uh, that's about it. Come and an intake. Tin. Yes, we do have a cold air intake. So I don't know specific numbers on the truck. I know that the turbo is capable of around 800 horsepower, but being that it's on the stock trans, it's probably about 600 horsepower to the wheels, about 1,400 foot pounds of torque. Oh, that's uh, nothing. So yeah, I mean, just a few more <laughs> ponies under the hood compared to that of the 1500, but um, it will be very unique to get Nick's initial reactions because honestly, from driving something like this to this, the entire the entire driving dynamic is, is totally Oh, crazy. Oh yeah, I'm ready for it. And it's gonna be nothing but candid and raw. Siri just tried to answer some questions. <laughs> so, so like I said, it should be kind of interesting to see uh, Nick's perspective on on the great white buffalo here behind us. Let's do it. All right. So, first impressions. Got to do a big old step up into Jack's truck. However, it's not that bad. He still does retain the side steps. So that is a very nice feature. Yep. Yep. Absolutely. So obviously, first impressions. You know, just getting in the truck. Well, it's very similar to mine because we have the basically the same generation truck, uh, Silverado. So, and from the inside, it probably yeah. isn't going to feel too much. No, the, the only thing, I mean, you have the you have the nice wrapped dash here that I don't have the the, the uh, contrast stitching on. So here. this I is don't, an LTZ. That's what it is. Okay, yep, so mine's so. just a two LT. Right. Okay. So it's got everything but the highest level of trim you know i've got all the leather seats and stuff but i just don't have this level of trim the steering wheel is exactly the same and obviously the uh, good old duramax air freshener adds i put a that nice there little just touch. so you didn't forget about what you were driving oh right yeah. all right so we're gonna adjust the seat here real quick only because jack likes to low ride a little bit i like to feel like i'm in a race car <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, so I think one it's thing going. that you'll notice is driving a diesel, just overall, I don't know if this is the proper reference, but it feels like a heavier driving experience. Oh, yes. that's was That was the very first observation. Like, all right, the brake pedal's got to get heavy on the brake pedal. It's like driving, this is almost like driving more of a tank as compared to, um, let's like say- Like a passenger car? Like a Jeep. <laughs> like, you know what I mean? If we're in the military and we're comparing military vehicles, my truck is the Jeep, the Willys Jeep, and this is the freaking Panzer. <laughs> I like that. I like that spool. That's nice. Yeah, that's something that definitely doesn't get old. We're on a back road right now, so you can't really, we can't spool it up too much. Cause we got a lot of corners and stuff. It's one thing I noticed, if I don't get to drive this truck for like an extended period of time, I'll just drive it with no music on, just so I can embrace that, that great <laughs> audible characteristic. Yeah, 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 yeah. So yeah, this is a, an, an Allison transmission. It's, it's been married to the Duramax, the 6.6 .6 liter Duramax throughout basically its entire iteration. I think they introduced the Duramax in the early 2000s. It stayed a 6.6 .6 liter and it's just gone through kind of um, revision enhancements throughout its life cycle. So this is an LML Duramax. Um, they offered the LML from 2011 to 2016, and they just most recently switched to the L5P, uh, which is, again, still kind of the same 6.6 liter foundation, but they basically redesigned the entire motor going into that generation. I've got to watch now because my, my tires are sticking out past the fenders, and if I'm hugging that double yellow line on the inside, 
it's probably going to stick into their lane. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? I, I, I describe it to people. Driving a truck with, with such wide wheels is kind of like a game of operation. Yeah. Trying to kind of stay between the lines and continuously thread the needle. Right, right. So the ride is not as quiet because of the tires, obviously. Yep. Uh, there's a lot of road noise using something like this. Um, and like you said, we go back to the original comparison of the fact that it's, it's way more of a heavy feeling drive. Right, you know? right. Now this heavy drive, is that because of the wheels and tires on this truck? Well, it, that'll definitely influence it. Uh, I mean, that's it, gotta be a lot of weight added to this. Yeah, so each one of these wheels, that's actually a really good point to bring up. Uh, each one of the wheels and tires together, I weighed them in one of my previous YouTube videos. They weigh about 150 pounds. Okay. Compared to stock, which was like 90. Okay. So you, you definitely yeah. have a lot of rotational mass. Yeah. So outside of really the, the overall weight of driving, I think this is where you're really going to get a flavor of just how different the power is delivered on a diesel versus a gas. Okay, so we're going to get on the highway here in just a second once this traffic clears because we've been driving back roads for the past five minutes now. If you want, you can just kind of like land and throttle or however. It's like a very, it's dead way different than an yeah. actually aspirated V8. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'll say yeah. It, it keeps, it's like keeps going, like it wants to keep pulling, you know what I mean? Yeah, and that's one thing that's nice about this turbo. I mean, once you have a, a, a tuned diesel, it will pull. Yeah. But this turbo especially, it's going to pull all the way through your RPM spectrum. So that's what it really felt wherever like, yeah. you are, you're like, okay, I'm at boost here, but then if you mash it more, there's more there. So we weren't really up to speed for that long. Unfortunately, there's a little bit of traffic today, but um, I was trying to gauge how it felt just cruising on the highway, you know, with a setup like this. It wasn't bad. Like, I didn't yeah, think it, it was... it's not bad. One of the nice things about the way that I have the truck configured right now, even with the wide wheels and the lift kit, is it doesn't get that, uh, that boat feeling. So if anybody's ever driven a boat, you kind of have to constantly jiggle the wheel just to stay straight. I was <laughs> yeah. I was anticipating that with such wide wheels and trying to stay within a lane, but it's, yeah. it, it does a great job of really tracking forward. It, it doesn't want to ever kind of go into any other ruts or lanes or anything like that, which is kind of surprising to me still. Um, but it is nice for, for highway driving and longer distance driving. For yeah. those of you guys that are wanting to lift your truck and do a similar setup, there you go. Now, unfortunately today, with just the time that we have available, we, we weren't able to, to simulate any towing scenarios. Uh, but I think that it would be good to just discuss that. Now, um, I do have prior towing experience with other trucks. I haven't done much towing with this truck specifically, but I do have a Corvette. Uh, I did go out and pick up a trailer uh, about two weeks ago and I married it to this truck just to see how it would do with, again, the lift kit and the modifications that are on it. With the bigger turbo, there's you know increased lag. It's not as responsive as the stock one, uh, but it still did very well. It's not like, again, you lost a lot of the drivability. The truck tracked the road very well. Yeah. Uh, braking was still very good. It's not like anything felt loose or wobbly. Overall, it, it's it's a great package for what I'm going to be using it for, and that's kind of everyday driving as well as some light towing. So getting back to the lot now, this was pretty cool. I like it. I like driving this truck. Could I drive it every day? I don't know. Yeah, I think it'd be a little bit much to drive every day, honestly, yeah. just the way that it's set up. I think uh, the lifted life it definitely has its, um, I mean, has its perks, but it also has to be that that certain type of person that likes it. You know what I mean? Right, absolutely. That wants their truck lifted, that wants to drive it around constantly. Hey, if you got a truck that's not a daily driver and you want to lift it, by all means, yeah, I would it. say absolutely. do it. Because that's awesome, you know what I mean? But if you're going to be daily driving your truck and you're kind of on the edge of if it's, if it's going to be comfortable and you know what I mean? Easy to Reliable drive, easy to navigate, whatever, yeah. all that kind, kind yeah, of stuff. Yeah, like, they're just turning the wheel right there. It's, I can't. Don't, they way too much. Right, way yeah, too much. Get a little bit I of have, movement. You have to actually start moving before you can turn the wheel. Exactly. It's like it doesn't have power steering. Yeah. It's crazy. Because they're so heavy. So what we're going to do now is we are going to switch scenes on you guys. We're going to switch drivers, and we're going to jump on into Nick's trucks, and I'm going to now provide you my opinion versus kind of my diesel experience now into a gas truck. Let's do it. All right, so just a little bit of roll reversal now, and I am behind the wheel of a red 2016 Silverado. Oh, sorry. I'm behind the wheel of a red 2017 Silverado 1500. Uh, it's got a leveling kit. Uh, you have a light barn. You've got a cold air inductions intake, as you mentioned. And aside from that, this is going to be my first time driving a 2017, or as you could call it, new body style 
uh, GM light duty truck. So overall, these trucks are very friendly to drive. It's not like they, they, GM didn't design these trucks to be intimidating by any means because they want to cater to somebody that has the flexibility of the truck, the cargo storage in the rear and the, the cargo inside for passenger storage as well. But they didn't want it to be big and bulky and heavy feeling, kind of like Nick had noted right. in driving my truck. So right away, it's kind of like the featherweight class. You know, it, it, it feels nimble, agile, and um, it's just easy to drive. Yeah, and the funny thing is this is a full-size truck. This isn't like the, the Colorados, which are so, sort of a smaller right. style truck. Right. I'm sure driving one of those, which I haven't yet and I really want to, I'm sure driving one of those is probably, this probably feels even lighter, more along the lines of like a smaller SUV. And speaking know? of that, actually, earlier on in the week, Truck Central posted a video of a ZR2 Colorado review. If you haven't seen that yet, continue enjoying this video and then go over and check that one out. We also answered some questions too about the new featured segment that we're gonna be putting on the channel. And um, a lot of you guys have been asking similar questions about it and we answer all of them. So that will be at the end of that video as well. Yeah, and if you've made a submission of your truck, don't think that it's gotten ignored. We just have over a hundred of them that we're reading through diligently. So we'll be sure to consider all submissions. We definitely encourage you to make yours. But overall, you know, as you're looking over the hood of, of this truck, it does slant down more. Yeah, yeah I, I like it too. It's neat. It's got like a nice little cowl. Uh, that you know, it gives you kind of that sense of yes, you know, I have a full bodied American V8 under the hood, right? And now, speaking about the powertrain, you know, it's it's very smooth. The 5.3 liter in the in these trucks is is great, really. It's it's kind of like the the little brother of the the Corvette, the six or, two, or yeah, uh, yeah, it's it, it, the little brother of the 6.2, which is in the Corvette and the Camaro. Uh, it is a 5.3, so you know, it, it's it's a little bit less bodied if you will, but uh, just driving gradually on these back roads, you know, the power is there, it's very predictable, it's consistent, and um, you know, it, it's not like it feels like it's a slug by any means. Yeah, and another thing worth mentioning too is there's an optional 6.2 V8 that you can get in this truck. Uh, obviously, I have the 5.3 because this is the 2LT as opposed to the LTZ, like your truck's the LTZ model. That's right. Mine is everything but the highest possible trip. But that um, offers a huge price differential when you're looking at MSRP. It certainly does. Yeah, I, I fully optioned out a 2LT, and it was cheaper than buying a fully optioned, obviously, LTZ. And that's one of the nice ways of going about maybe customizing your truck is you can really be selective in what you're actually yeah. going to use and pay for cordially versus paying for something that you're never going to use. Yeah, you don't have to have the highest trim level to get the best interior. Right, and a for instance, my that. truck has a screen. It's got a DVD player. Yeah, so... I, like DVDs don't even exist anymore. <laughs> yeah. So now you added a cold air inductions intake system for this. They make a really nice kit that basically just bolts right in. Yeah, it, cold, it's, it's yeah. simple. Cold air inductions makes a lot of intakes for trucks, um, SUVs, and Camaros, whatever. So and you'll notice that, and I've actually driven a few 1500s before, so I, I kind of have a few other experiences. But yeah. with the addition of the intake, you can really hear a throaty growl. So we'll see if we can get a little sound clip of the audio from the intake here. It's definitely way more noticeable. Oh yeah. That's nice. That's yeah. really, really nice. Yep. So, I mean, really, I think it's a no-brainer, guys. If you have any sort of a 1500 series truck that has a gas motor, do an intake. It'll cost you a few hundred dollars. Uh, but it'll be one of the, the easiest things that you can do to squeeze out just a little bit more power uh, and a little bit of a, of, a, of a different driving dynamic for your vehicle. I mean, right now we're climbing up a hill and it's just growling. It sounds yeah. mean. It sounds like I have an exhaust, but that's coming from the engine. You know what I mean? Right, exactly. Yeah. That's that's really nice. I yeah. like that a lot. It's very uh, torquey. It's very touchy. It is torquey. It is touchy. Yep. Um, it definitely, the throttle is inherently more responsive. Like I just kind of stepped on the gas there and, it, and we went. Whereas yeah. my truck, you can kind of roll into it. Yeah. And you kind of feel like you're chugging along in addition, like additional weight. Yep. Um, but you know, it, it's it's peppy, it's responsive. Now, speaking of towing, I think that that's a good topic to just touch on because we touched upon it in my truck. I yeah. mentioned that, you know, my truck, it, it tows well. It didn't really feel like there was anything behind it because it's already such a heavy truck. And right. I think one of the biggest misnomers out in the truck community, the truck research process for anybody that's going into a new truck or, or you know, even just buying a truck for the first time is, do you need a diesel to tow? 
No, and that's the answer. And and in your experience, you actually bought this truck in Kentucky. You were at Camaro Fest. So yes, I was at Camaro Fest in Kentucky. And, and you bought your ZL1 from um, from the same dealership. Yep. But what I did was, I drove um, my car to Kentucky. Had my Camaro trailer with a different rig, and then once I went home, I towed my Camaro with this truck. So you had a, a like, cargo trailer, a car hauler trailer, and yep. your new ZL1. If you get the the highest V8 for the 1500, you can tow. Which is the 6.2 liter. Yeah, you can tow 12,500 pounds. If you have that's a big number it is very big so i'd say oh. i think it's fair to assume that this five through somewhere be somewhere let's just say around like ten thousand yeah nine ten thousand nine or ten thousand what this thing could tow um you know, and i mean really for a general purpose non-commercial use you're probably never going to need to exceed that right so look at that as a ten thousand dollar cost savings exactly and that was one of the reasons why i didn't buy buy a diesel duramax it just you know, I didn't, it wasn't needed. All I was going to be towing was my car. The maximum, I'm talking like that's the max I'd be towing was a car in a trailer. Other than general hauling and throwing stuff in the back of the bed, you know, that's pretty much it. So what did you think? Well, I thought it was good. I thought it was really good. Uh, what, what, I'm, what I'm happy about is that we were able to express candid opinions, really with not much experience with either platform, right? Yeah. From our opinions. And I think it'll be good for the viewers. I hope that you guys enjoyed it because it's gonna be one video that really knocks out a lot of the misconceptions about the two trucks and kind of the offerings that they bring. Yeah, yeah, I, I definitely agree. And I think we answered a lot of good questions that some people may have had for either truck and I feel as you know whichever truck you choose you know I think it's gonna be suit I think they can both suit everyone's needs right kind of how I see it right you know what I'm saying absolutely you get a diesel and even though if you don't need a diesel it doesn't matter you're still gonna like it you get a V8 and you think oh man I need more than a V8 you really probably don't you know what I'm saying so right. I think either way which either route you go I think they're both great choices so let us know what you guys think would you rather have the lifted Duramax diesel, or just diesel truck, or would you rather have the V8 1500? <laughs> the practical V8 1500. This is not practical at all. <laughs> would you rather have a turbo whistle, or a nice big American V8 sound? <laughs> I think I know which one I'd like. I Although I, I love too. this, I love this truck. Right. I'm just so much of an American V8 guy, you know? In fact, all three of my vehicles have American V8s in them. You're not biased at all. No, I'm not biased. No, 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 no. no. But anyway, guys, we just wanted to say thank you again for tuning into another video at Truck Central. Uh, it's been kind of difficult to continue to pump out a lot of content for you guys because of obvious reasons. But going into 2018, the days are getting longer and hopefully getting warmer shortly. Yeah. Uh, so there's going to be a lot to come. We got. A, we already have a lot of great videos that are on the channel and coming to the channel. So right. um, be sure to share this video. Be sure to give it a very, very big thumbs up. Tell your friends about it. If you got any truck owners that are that want some good truck content, this is going to be one of the only channels on YouTube that is exclusively truck content all the time. So this is a great channel to subscribe to if you are a truck enthusiast. So be sure to do that. Hit the subscribe button below. And have a great day.